I can't get this clip involving this big shot editor from the Washington Post along with a CNN talking head. I can't get it out of my head because these two guys have a slight disagreement. They're trying to decide exactly how much white people suck, how much white people hate people, how much white people are always messing with black people, all the while ignoring this enormous level of black on white, black on young, black on old, black on gay, black on straight, black on Asian, black on Eskimo, black on Amish, black on kitties, puppies, turtles, and goldfish, crime and violence that is rampant, that they are in denial, deceit, and delusion about. I can't get that clip out of my mind. I think it's so important to see how mainstream this ridiculous level of black and white hostility is. So let's watch a couple seconds of that clip. And then why don't we move right into some recent stories of black and white murder that is wildly out of proportion and that the people on this clip don't want anything to do with. What I argued in my piece for the Washington Post was that this is a, an American problem. So when you have a white folks, um, non-black people of color that are so quick to call the police on black people in a particular space, knowing what we know about what can happen to black people after encounters with police, whether it be arrests, detentions, or injury, or even death, I think is what we really need to be talk, talking about. So who's going to train not only you know the Starbucks employees, but who's going to train teachers um, refraining from calling the police on black kids in schools is going to teach the or train the mom and pop stores um, real estate developers landlords I mean really and honestly I think America needs about a hundred years worth of racial bias training well here's a twofer this black person not only killed an old person he killed an Asian person two favorite targets of black violence two favorite targets of white denial deceit and delusion oh let's just move on down to i think D the dallas fort worth area where we have one more black boyfriend killing his white girlfriend watch this clip and see we'll see if you pick up the one thing i picked up on which was she didn't want to bring him home she didn't want to introduce her boyfriend to anybody she knew. Dan, the friends that I spoke to say the man and woman were in a relationship. They had been dating more than a year. Tonight, that man is in jail. The woman's friends still wrapping their heads around this, saying they don't know how anyone could kill such a wonderful person. Memories are all the Nina Chandler has left of her best friend. She was way too sweet of a girl to go out like that. For more than 12 years, she and Jennifer Moore were inseparable. We would just come over here and hang out and eat food. <laughs> just hang out with the kids. Oftentimes, chatting for hours. She says Moore was a busy woman, working all hours of the day to provide for her son, but was always there if she needed her. She's always been a really good girl to me. Wednesday, Chandler learned her pregnant best friend had been murdered. I couldn't even breathe. Like... It was all crazy, and then they said she was pregnant, and it just kept getting worse and worse, and I was like, oh my God, Like I, don't, I still don't even know what to think. Dallas police believe 28-year-old Randy Childs fatally shot Moore at this apartment complex off Clydedale Drive in northwest Dallas. Chandler says Childs was Moore's boyfriend. The two had been dating more than a year. She never brought him around. She wouldn't let me see who he is or anything. Chandler says Moore kept their relationship private and never told her she was pregnant. According to an arrest warrant affidavit, Childs' mother told police her son told her something was wrong Wednesday. She went to the apartment to find Moore not moving. Then Childs pointed a gun at her and told her to get in the closet. She said, are you going to shoot me? And he said, no, because you are my mother and I love you. I don't even want to say what I would say to him. I want to know what happened. I want justice for her and that baby. That's sad. Tonight with developing news, two suspects are now in custody in connection with the disappearance of a Worcester woman. 71-year-old Elvia Fragstein went missing back on July 7th. Her body was found in Jefferson County last Wednesday. Channel 7's Nick Popham is live for us in Conway tonight. He's got the latest on this investigation. Nick? Chris, good evening. This investigation has taken law enforcement from Conway all the way down to Jefferson County. And today, law enforcement was able to arrest 
two individuals that they believe are in connection with Fragstein's disappearance. Today, we saw one of those arrests, and we have video of it, something that you will only see on Channel 7. It's been a group effort by three different law enforcement agencies. Sheriff's Office, search warrant. Sheriff's Office, search warrant. Two county and a city agency searching for suspects in connection with the kidnapping of 71-year-old Elvia Fragstein, who was last seen a little over a week ago in Conway. Channel 7 crews were in Jefferson County to see the apprehension of 16-year-old Robert Smith. He was arrested at this home in Pine Bluff earlier Monday. Along with Smith, 18-year-old Takori Mackerel was also taken to the Jefferson County Detention Center for the same incident. At around 5 Monday evening, Smith was taken in this vehicle up to Faulkner County to their detention center, where he now awaits a day in court. Just about an hour or so later, just before 6.30 in the evening, the 16-year-old Smith arrived in Conway in handcuffs and was escorted into the jail. Two teens are in jail tonight facing murder charges in the death of a 75-year-old man. As Charles Harrington reports, the two were arrested after a month-long investigation into the victim's death. Covington County Under Sheriff Lane McLaurin tells us 15-year-old Jamar Lamont Hayes of Mount Olive and 16-year-old Dontavis Shared McGee of Gulfport face murder charges in the death of Jesse Lee Doby. Doby was transported to the hospital on June 3rd with head injuries. He died two days later at Forest General Hospital. Coroner Chris Daquilla said his death was ruled a homicide after an autopsy determined he died from blunt force trauma. A subsequent investigation determined he was the victim of a robbery and assault. McLaurin says Hayes was arrested in Covington County last week and McGee was arrested by U.S. Marshals Sunday in Gulfport. Both have made their initial court appearances where their bonds were set at $1 million each. Elijah Tart, the 16-year-old accused of killing Mike Gentry, better known as Thumbs Up Mike, was denied bond today. The Harrisburg community is still very shaken up after Gentry's death. There have been three protests since it happened. News 12's Alexa Lytle spoke with a protester to see if they're gaining any ground. This is where Mike Gentry was killed a little over two weeks ago. Take a look. There's still a memorial out here for him. Tons of flowers, an angel, and even some candles. Now, his death sparked several protests, and those protesters say they're not stopping until Harrisburg gets the attention and help it needs. Protest after protest, Butch Palmer and his Harrisburg friends are asking for change. We're trying to get through that uh, we're a neighbor, a struggling neighborhood with only two, about 200 some odd homeowners oh, and we're surrounded by people who are doing nefarious things. Seeing Mike Gentry who was bound to a wheelchair shot and killed is fueling their fire. It was such a heinous and uh, terrible crime in broad daylight and it was like it's, it's like taking a, a a helpless puppy and slaughtering it. Protests started at the sheriff's office where Butch says they reach more people in the community. We got uh, awareness. We got uh, citizenry awareness. We have not heard anything from Sheriff Roundtree. I reached out to the sheriff's office and got this statement. The sheriff has been and is still working diligently to reduce criminal activity in the Harrisburg area. Palmer and other protesters didn't stop with the sheriff. We choose to go to the court courthouse because it involves all branches of government. Then took the protest to the municipal building. The goal is to show that the municipal building and the commission has a part in it too. Still, Palmer says nothing from city leaders. Mayor Davis has not responded. Wearing a shirt that says justice for Mike, Palmer says they won't stop fighting. My name is Rennie Edo Lodge. Um, I'm a journalist and I am the author of the new book, why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. About three and a half years ago now, um, I wrote a post on my blog called Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. I wrote it uh, at a point of extreme frustration and despair, frankly, uh, after a few years of attempting to try and talk to white people about race and just really getting nowhere. I was she doesn't want to talk to us about race anymore. It's because she doesn't have any answers and she doesn't like the questions she hears. Why is there so much black violence? Why is there so much denial? 
Why is there so little pushback when people like you make up these little fairy tales? And why are publishers so eager to publish them? Why are booksellers so eager to sell them? Why are college professors so eager to assign them into their classrooms? That's the only people. That's the only way these books get sold on college campuses. And now she doesn't want to talk to white people anymore. What are we missing? Just one more Lamont Hill, one more Michael Eric Dyson, one more Spike Lee, one more person that thinks if they keep shouting and talking over us, we won't notice there's something really, really wrong in this country. Chief among them that way too many people are afraid of making the black kids angry.